Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense. Today I'm doing a tag video. I was tagged uh, a couple weeks ago by Timmy at Imagine Scent, so shout outs to Timmy. The video that I've been tagged to do is one fragrance to rule them all. So this is kind of an interesting tag video slash strange tag video. The rules are I have to find a fragrance that can be worn by a man or a woman. So basically something that would work unisex. It has to be a fragrance that could potentially work in any season. It should be a fragrance that could potentially work in any situation. And lastly, it's a fragrance that should be able to get you compliments. So that's a whole lot to pack into one fragrance. I did pick out a few fragrances that I own that could potentially fill most of that criteria and then one that I picked as the overall winner. So let's jump into this. When I first started working on this, I wasn't exactly sure where I was gonna go with it, but I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. Now the first fragrance that I think is a potential fragrance to rule them all is one that could pretty easily be worn by a man or a woman. The thing that holds this back from being higher up on this video is that it's really summer centric. It's this fragrance, Versace Man Eau Fraiche. It has lemon, bergamot, cedar, musk, and star fruit as some of the main notes. This fragrance gets compared to Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue for Women. So while this is a little more masculine fragrance than that one is, the fact that this is close enough to be even compared to Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue for Women means that pretty easily this could be worn by women. Obviously, as well as men, because the name of the fragrance is Versace Man Eau Fraiche. The star fruit and citrus in the opening in the mid of this is really refreshing, easily compliment getting, very fresh, but again, that makes it a very summer or spring heavy type of fragrance. So in the depths of winter, this one probably wouldn't work out as well as you would hope, at least as far as an all season type fragrance goes. This one's a big compliment getting fragrance for me as well, so it easily checks that box. I've seen some people say that this is overrated. Other people say that it's underrated. To me, it's not anything world changing, but it smells nice, it gets compliments, it's easy to wear, and it's not all that expensive. Like most Versace fragrances, you can pick this up at discounters pretty cheap. This is not the winner in my one fragrance to rule them all video, but it's worth mentioning, along with the next three we're gonna talk about. This next fragrance is a really easy to wear fragrance. It's not as summer centric as Versace Man Eau Fraiche. This one has a little bit more versatility in my opinion. It has gotten heavy use by myself and lots and lots of guys over the years, so it's not like this is a super unique fragrance, but it's it does have enough of a feminine lean that I think you could consider it unisex as long as the woman wearing it is a little bit adventurous. It's this one, YSL Loam. Thought about going with Loam Ultime, but to me, this one would work a little bit better. It's got spice, bergamot, tonka, and lemon, along with a really nice ginger as some of the main notes. This is another fragrance, like the last one, that's fresh, easy to wear, and compliment pulling. Loam is gonna be a little bit better in fall and winter than Versace Man Eau Fraiche would be. And while this is another fragrance that's specifically marketed toward men, it's not considered unisex. Like I said when I introduced this one, I think that a woman could pull this one off pretty easily. These next three were all right in the running to be the, uh, the winner of this video. It really came down to the wire. I just had to make a choice and so this one and the next one are, are just barely behind the winner. Next fragrance I wanna talk about is this one, Eccentric Molecules, Molecule O2. I've talked about this one in the past in a couple of videos. Molecule O1 by Eccentric Molecules is the fragrance from this house that gets talked about the most. That one is based off of ISO E Super. It's technically ISO Gamma Super that's used in Molecule O1. Either way though, ISO E Super is the note that people are gonna pull from that one. This one though is based off of Ambroxan and that's the only official note in the fragrance. Ambroxan, that's it. So Molecule O2 and Molecule O1 could very, very, very easily be worn by a man or a woman, it does not make a difference. A lot of people use Molecule O2 and Molecule O1. I keep pointing that way because that's where Molecule O1 is in my collection, up that way. To layer with other fragrances. So they might spray Molecule O1 on and then another fragrance over top of it, or Molecule O2, spray that on, spray another fragrance over top of it, 
or sometimes they will take this fragrance or Molecule 01, mix it together with another fragrance in a decant bottle, shake that bad boy up and wear it that way. So what that can do for you is increase the performance of the fragrance that you mix with the Molecule 01 or 02. And it also adds the facet of Iso Gamma Super or Ambroxan to whatever it is you're wearing. To be honest though, when I wear this fragrance or Molecule 01 99 times out of 100, I just wear it by itself. I don't mix it. So being based off of Ambroxan, this is going to be sweet, warm, a little effervescent, it can come across a little bit salty, but it's extremely pleasant, very attractive, and extremely easy to wear. Molecule O2 is a little bit like Molecule O1, where some people will go anosmic to it, won't be able to pick it up, even though it's there. And other people that move around you will be able to pick it up, and a lot of times are gonna love the way it smells. Molecule O1, Molecule O2, huge compliment getting fragrances personally, for me, and I know a lot of you out there have had good luck with these as well. Where this is so easy to wear and so versatile, it had to make this list. Like I said, Molecule 01 gets a lot of the hype, but in my opinion, Molecule 02 is a better fragrance. It smells better, gets more compliments, lasts longer, just nicer. Obviously though, if you're gonna get that, you have to like Ambroxan. Another fragrance I'm gonna bring up but not actually talk about is Bleecker Street. I thought that could have made the list, but I wanted to keep this to five, so I'm not gonna talk about Bleecker Street other than saying I thought about putting it in, but it's much more of a spring-only fragrance to me. We're in the last two. Again, it was really, really close, but for number two, Oud Lemon Mint by Mansara. Oud, lemon, almond, and vanilla are some of the main notes of this fragrance. Interestingly, you would think mint would be one of the main notes since it is Oud, lemon, mint, but mint is not an official note in this fragrance. This is one of my favorite Mansara fragrances. Easily can be worn by a man or a woman in my opinion. You've got a really nice lemon note, and then the oud in here is not off-putting or animalic or funky at all. It's gonna have great performance like most Mansara's, good projection, good longevity. It's one that in my opinion you can wear year round. You can wear this in spring, summer, fall, or winter. You just need to adjust your sprays up or down depending on the heat. It's sweet, it's got some creaminess to it, really nice high quality fragrance, and believe it or not, huge compliment magnet. I've gotten many compliments wearing this fragrance over the last few years. It is a banger, one that you should not overlook if you like Mansara's. So there we go, Aoud Lemon Mint. This one is a killer, almost, almost, almost my number one fragrance for this list. Or I guess technically it wasn't supposed to be a list, but I kind of changed it and turned it into one. All right, this fragrance that I hold in my hand right now. I know, I know, it's, the tension is killing me. I'm just playing. The fragrance that I hold in my hand right now uh, after I gave it some thought, I figured this has to be it. Now, as far as summer wear goes, there are better choices out there. This one could be a little too strong for summer, but if you dial it back, maybe one spray, two sprays, it can work year round. It is a compliment magnet. It can be worn unisex in my opinion. I'll talk about why. It is this one, Parfums de Marly Pegasus. Almond, lavender, vanilla, and sandalwood are some of the main notes in this fragrance. Now, a lot of you out there probably think of this as just a straight up masculine fragrance, but this actually has a strong similarity to Dior Hypnotic Poison, which is a fragrance that I own. My wife has it, technically, I guess, but that fragrance smells very similar to this, and it's an extremely popular women's fragrance. If you don't believe me, Next time you're in a Sephora or whatever, if they have hypnotic poison, you've never smelled that, spray it on a tester strip and compare. There are some striking similarities between this and hypnotic poison. So with this, having those similarities to hypnotic poison, I think a woman can easily pull this one off as well as a man, obviously. It's a compliment getter, it's versatile, you could wear this formally, you could wear this casually, you can wear this in almost any situation. Again, adjusting sprays up or down depending on where you're gonna be, inside, outside, casual, formal, hot, cold, whatever. Like I said, it came down to the wire between this and Aoud Lemon Mint, Molecule 2 just a little bit behind those two, but I had to go with this one because of that similarity to a really popular women's fragrance and the fact that this is already considered a really nice men's release. Versatile, compliment getting, projection, it's got it all, and it's not that expensive as far as niche fragrances go. Parfums de Marly, 
Pegasus. Now I need to tag some people to do this video. I have to keep the tag going because that's how it works. My friend George at The Fragrance Apprentice has been back making videos on YouTube again. He kind of took a hiatus for a while, but he's been uploading basically every day. So I'm going to tag George first off. And let's think, let's think, let's think. I'll also tag Manny from Cascade Scents just because friends. And then I will tag the Scentatar. So Benjamin at the Scentatar, I tag you as well. Three guys, and you guys can do this video and keep that tag going. If any of you that I tagged have already done this video, just ignore me tagging you and pretend like this never happened. All right guys, that is gonna do it for me for this one fragrance to rule them all video. It's actually a little bit harder than you would think once you start digging into it and you try to find something that can be worn casually, formally, every season, day, night, man or woman that also gets compliments. It starts to get complicated. All right guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Let me know what you thought about these choices. Try not to flame me too hard. I thought I did an okay job here. Let me know what you would have chosen for this kind of list or with this criteria. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I will see you guys again next time with another video. See you guys.